for many years. My first attempt to analyze anarchist music was in 1989. I was then completing a degree at the Conservatoire in Montreal. And I had chosen Pitopracta as the main subject for my dissertation. But I, I, I didn't have any mathematical background, so I didn't know how to start. But I knew that drawing played an important role in the work of Xenarchis, that very often he conceived his music by means of a two-dimensional plane, a Cartesian coordinate system where the abscissas represent time and the ordinates pitch. I knew that the use of graphic scores enabled him to deal more effectively with the representation of continuous sound and also to visualize the evolution of sonic events. So to get a closer look at the structures, at the musical ideas hidden behind the staves, I carried out a transcription from the score. Sanakis had already done something like that with a, uh, a few by Bach at the age of 15, but my challenge was, was more ambitious. It also proved very fruitful because it made a clear impact on my understanding of the way Zanakis conceived his music. So ever since I have transcribed excerpts from Zanakis' scores into graphic transcriptions as a hobby, a harmless one, except from my sight maybe. So this presentation is about a, a particular type of drawings, the arborescences namely those drawn by Zanakis in the years 1973-1974, and focusing on Normina, which is an orchestral piece of 19, uh, written in 1974. As such, it can be seen as a small addendum to the wonderful exhibition Yanis Zanakis, composer, architect, visionary, uh, presented by the Drawing Center. Uh, my transcriptions are made directly from the scores. They may differ from the sketches of Zanarchus. They may reveal a change of mind or possible errors. Zanarchus did not theorize the arborescences and referred to them mainly in his interviews. But the notion of arborescence can have various theoretical meanings. For example, according to graph theory, an arborescence is a kind of tree a connected graph without cycles, whose edges are directed away or towards the root, in such a way that any two vertices can be connected by a unique, simple path. But graphs can be represented in many ways, and because graph theory concerns itself with the, the abstract properties of graphs, the relative position of lines and points have, has no significance, which is not the case when we um, draw graphs in a pitch versus time domain. So there is no evidence of a relation between the arborescences drawn by Zanakis and the theory of graph or any other theory. Zanakis relies essentially on his creative intuition. What matters is the complex of coordinated lines the macroscopic object. In his interview with Palin Varga, Zanakis explains, quote, we start out of a point in space, this can be pitch versus time space or any other. In order for it to exist, the point has to continually re to repeat itself. In this way, a line is formed which can have any shape. Any point on the line can also reproduce itself and bring about an arborescence, end quote. Unquote. From a compositional point of view, there is a difference between arborescences and textures of glissandi. Sanakis often draws melodic lines that are not to be considered as arborescences. They are simply superimposed as part of the texture. With arborescences, the lines are coordinated. Each new line stem fr stems from a branch or a root. The idea of arborescences occurred to Zanarchus in the 70s. As he said, uh, it just cropped up in an instant. I don't know how. I just caught myself doing it. It may have cropped as an instant, cropped up in an instant, 
but Zanarkis had already drawn shapes um, related in some way with arborescences. To give an example, the beginning of Metastasis presents some of the characteristics of the arborescent. There is a, a root, a series of lines branching out, diverging from the root, no cycles, all moving in the same direction. The beginning of metastasis is made with straight lines drawn with a ruler. Arborescences describe curves, which sometimes evoke random-like movements. Along with Evriali, a piano, a piano for piano solo, Sandré for orchestra unfold the first arborescences, tree-like shapes that develop as a continuous flow of lines moving in the same direction. Sandré begins, like Mr. Stasis, on a single note. This note is sustained during 36 bars, from which other lines diverge and ramify. It shows the characteristic of arborescences, root, connectivity, directed edges, no cycles. All the edges move away from the root. <laughs> Another example taken from Noemena for orchestra shows a more elaborate arborescence. The woodwinds and brass flutter tongue, and the main branch played by the bassoon describe wave-like movements from which other branches played by the brass develop. We see that orchestration functions as a means to clarify parts of the arborescences. Also, each line is varied by dynamic fluctuations, if we look at the score, we can see that every line has a different uh, um, uh, dynamic fluctuations. And also, the beginning and the end of each line is marked with an accent. And the main line, the, the, the main branch played by the three bassoon, the three bassoons play the same melodic line, but have different uh, dynamic profiles that converge at the point where other lines branch out, as we can see um, here on the third beat. The, the fluctuations of the bassoons converge because there's a, a, another branch that will stem out in the arborescences. In the arborescence. So 
This line is punctuated with accents. This simple example also shows that the, the, the edges may intersect at the point that does not correspond to a node. This means that the lines may also pass through a point without being related to it, because anarchous arborescents are not planar graphs, but they are thought of in a three-dimensional space. Basically, we can distinguish two kinds of arborescences. The ongoing flow of continuous lines of movements, like we have seen, or objects. Considered as objects, arborescences are delimited in time. They can be reproduced and transformed. This is why Xenarchists also call them clonings and refer to the transformation as a kind of generalization of the melodic principle. As we have said about metastasis, Xenakis had already drawn objects related in some way to arborescences. We can, for example, relate the ge geometrical configurations of convergent and divergent glissandi, like those found in Sirmos, written in 1959 for 18 strings, uh, to arborescences. We can see from this example that geometrical configurations of divergent and convergent lines uh, from objects that share the characteristics they are transforms, rotated, etc. This example is also made with straight lines. But the most cited work with regard to arborescences is Eric Donne, a concerto for piano, an orchestra writ written in 1974. In this, this, this example is part of the exhibition. I didn't know. I would have probably chosen another one, but um, it's a, a piano concerto written in 1974. In this piece, an artist Gives, rain to, gives, his, gives his imagination free reign. It is, from a graphic point of view, a repository of shapes, many of which were redeployed in subsequent works. At least two of these, these shapes will be shown later in another work. Uh, the arborescences in Eric Don appear in the raw material. There are very few plain techniques, as far as the arborescences are concerned, or dynamic variations. This passage fortissimo has a very strong textural intensity. It is very unlikely that one could hear the objects that underlie the passage. We are more likely to feel caught in a tangled web of lines.
the piano is missing, this example. Um, Noumena means things thought. It's a philosophical term borrowed from Kant. Sinarchus imagines sonic events that would appear and disappear. Noumena begins with the woodwinds, flutes and clarinets, as we can see from the score. We see that some lines are doubled. All the lines are varied by dynamic fluctuations, except from the first flute and clarinet at the very beginning, which hold to a fortissimo in unison and fluttered tongue. There is only one accent at the end on the last note of the first clarinet. Looking at the score, we can also identify the converging and diverging lines. Most of the time, move away or towards unison. Unisons are vertices joined by five edges in this particular case. Now, if we look at, at another example played by the strings, we can identify the same characteristics. The diverging lines, converging lines, also some dynamic fluctuations, tremolos played by the violas and the cellos, and the accent at the beginning of the line played by violin 14 to 16. So this object is related in some way with the one we saw earlier. Um, it also shows the way that Xenarchus spatialized the, the lines, as we can see that the, the, the violins are divided and spatialized among the orchestra, combining violins seated at different positions. The whole passage is based on the same musical idea, as we can see, and some of the, uh, this kind of shape was also shown in the example of Eric Tonne. The same musical idea is played by the woodwinds and the strings. Its original form is not duplicated, it undergoes various transformations, as we can see rotations at various angles, lengthening, contracting, distortion, expansions, etc. But these transformations are carried out by hand, freely. No rule at this time. The, the average dynamic is indicated below the graph. We see that Xenarchus carefully indicate, indicates the uh, playing techniques, flutter tonguing and tremolo, to draw attention to this particular V shape of the object, its head, maybe, and that an accent marks the end of the arborescence. So these characteristics are maintained for every object except uh, measure 14 and 15, where the strings superimpose two transformations that differ in their playing techniques, arco and tremolo, on the bridge. passage can be divided into two phases, one in which woodwinds and strings alternate, and the other one only with strings and the, the arborescence upside down. Uh, it's interesting to see that plain techniques and accents act as perceptual cues in this example. Uh, in his interview with Vargas, Zanakis tells us, quote, the drawing and thinking of the sound image go hand in hand, the two can't be separated. It would be silly to, live, to leave out of account when drawing what will sound in reality. We also have to be able to find on paper the visual equivalent of the musical idea. Any changes and modifications can be carried out on the drawing itself. This feedback has to operate all the time. Xenakis was well aware of the extent to which 
the transformations on the upgrades into rotations, lengthenings, would modify the objects, at least the way we perceive the objects, leading sometimes to, sometimes to completely different results. He has given the example of a single wave-like melody humming in the interviews, um, explaining that this melody would be transformed in a three-voice polyphony when rotated by an angle of 90 degrees. Botsanakis believed in our capacity to deal with this kind of elementary geometry by processing our sensations. But, as we would expect, Zanarkis' melodies are more elaborate than this simple wave-like example. Another passage from Noor Mena shows the same kind of transformations, a rotation by about 90 degrees, performed on a complex of melodic lines on an arborescence. The main branch is played arco by the strings and describes a random-like undulating curve not unlike that of Branian movements which had inspired Anarchus in the years before. We can see that from this branch other lines stem out with different playing techniques, tremolo on the bridge, collegno to strike the strings with the wood of the bow, and every note is marked with an, with an accent, even when a line is missing, as we can see, when the, the, the arborescence is rotated there are some accents, and, but also lines that are missing. The dynamic is fortissimo. In the first, we can hear the undulating movements uh, and the steepness of the glissandi. As a result of the rotation, the texture becomes denser and the slopes of the glissandi gentler. The next example takes complexity a step further. It shows an increase of textual de intensity. Leaving aside the arborescence played by the woodwinds, which will, we have seen also in Eric Ton, um, which belongs also to the preceding section, it's possible to discern five arborescences borrowed from the previous example. As we have seen, or orchestration plays an important role in defining the arborescence. It is, this is the first one. We can see that the main, the main branch is played by the strings, and then ramifications, um, underbids, tremolo, and collegium. It describes an irregular oscillating movement, also like the other one. It is rotated by an angle of about 45 degrees. We can see the, the humps in the main branch. In, in this first presentation, uh, descending glissandi predominates. The second one is rotated even more, and the rotation increases the density, at the same, same time reduces the slopes of the glissandi. We can also see that uh, the, the pitch versus time and time versus pitch domain is like a window for Zanarkis because some lines fall outside the registral boundaries of the graph. You can see here this line would continue and meet the main branch below. The third arborescence is even more rotated. The glissandi slows down, slow down. And the fort, the fort undergoes the biggest transformation, as we can see that it is expanded outside the, the upper limit of the graph. It is dilated. 
and here we have the ascending glissandi that predominate. Finally, the fifth is rotated even more, and due to its geometri geometrical position and its rotation, it's more complete. It's also developed the second humps because the Nagas added one ramification. So this whole passage is unfold the rotations and transformations of an arborescence. We can hear it as also as a transformation of the texture of, of descending glissandi to ascending glissandi. As a culminating section also, it is in some way reminiscent of the stretto of a fugue, where the imitations of the subject, in that case the object, appear in close succession and overlap. In comparison with other compositional means, arborescence rely on a more intuitive approach. The drawing may define the outlines of an object, its general contours, its shape, but does not always reveal the, the details that make, make it interesting or alive. We know that Zanarchus gave great importance both to the architectural aspect of his music, but also to the minute details indicating sometimes the beat between two sounds. He often acts as if he were sculpting the sound to bring the object to life, to deploy it in a multi-dimensional space. There has to be a dynamic effect, says Anarchus, about his drawings in an interview with Jean-Yves Bosseur. It has to mean something from the sonorous point of view even if it does not correspond to what you hear. Thank you.